Hi everyone and welcome to another episode by Poor Man Gamer. I originally had three videos all lined up with replays and then EA decided to roll out their updates and poof! All of my replays and everything I lined up was gone. So I sincerely apologize for missing Try Your Deck Thursdays. I had something lined up, it didn't work out. Um, I had to replay my not deck all over again. In the latest Rivals Champions, uh, what was it called? The Crate Challenge. I only won 8 games, but that's because one of my games, I got disconnected right in the beginning and I they counted it as a loss, unfortunately. So, nothing much I can really do about it. Here, I'm going to show you guys the Nod deck that I've been using to uh, power my way up into the uh, Tiberium League. I'm going to show you guys some really interesting matches and some matches that were just like, what are you doing, right? So, uh, without further ado, I'm going to show you guys the importance of uh, the Infernal. Now, the reason I love the Infernal, this is a pretty common deck, is because it is powerful against infantry, is good against vehicles, is great, is pretty good against buildings. The only drawback is it's really hard to get epic cards. And I also find it incredibly difficult to, um, because of the card limit, to level up. So anyway, here in this match, I'm going to start off like I usually do with my Harvester and then my non-buggy. Uh, not buggy, what am I saying? Cyber wheel. Right? He rolls out an infantry and he just eats it. I purposely let his infantry alive because I wanted to see what else he's going to roll out. I see that he's got a missile squad, so I'm going to go ahead now and engage his missile squad. With this deck, this is the effectiveness of this deck. I almost always start out with a cyber wheel because it gives me a counter um, against infantry, 2 on 1 against missile squads. And if I do lose it all, it's not really that big a deal because I always have the flame squad ready to go sit in the back. Right? So the reason I didn't roll up more cyber wheels is because I want to go up a, go after his harvester and I'm baiting his um, missile squads to come down. I figured this guy cannot control two things at once. There's no way he's going to pay attention to both and that's exactly what happens. He loses all of his missile squad on the side and ha 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 your orca didn't kill my tank. And I was like, oh, I thought I had you. Right? I really thought I had that harvester. Unfortunately, I didn't. What I should have done was leave my cyber wheel there, right? Uh, to, to take the shots from the orca so my bike can go down and finish the job. Unfortunately, I did a really, really poor job microing there and I got myself owned. Okay? I let the flame squad die because I figured, hey, what the hey. I'm gonna try this again. I'm gonna wake up and try again. So I knew that Orca was going to go after my Harvester. Obviously, when you have an Orca, what else are you going to do? So I quickly roll out my uh, Phantom to knock out his um, his Orca. And I'm going to go ahead and roll out my Flame Squad now. I have a Phantom on the field, which means that I can knock out almost all of his units really quickly in one or two shots. And that's precisely what happens. I'm going to go ahead and try to keep this missile count going, and I immediately roll an Inferno. I also see that I have a weakened flame squad, and so I'm going to let it die. So here's the key of this deck. I'm going to start with the cyber wheel, and if I see a ton of infantry, I switch over to flame troops. If I see that he has a vehicle, then I'm going to switch over to either a bike or a tank, and I start rolling those out. And for the most part, it holds up pretty well. There, I used my phantom. I was hoping to take out his talon. I'm standing on three tiles. I figured he's not going to kill me fast enough, and I'm going to go ahead and get this missile just not yet almost had him fortunately my phantoms were able to roll out bam bam right and down he goes and I win this missile count there it is but now I did overcommit a little bit on the phantoms and I didn't do a good job micro see at the top there how I lost a phantom for no reason should have moved it out of the way this is what happens when um, you're really busy in life and you don't quite have the energy like I, like you used to, like the young days, right? I'm doing the best I can here. I totally forgot I had bikes, so now I'm going to go ahead and send bikes against his talent instead of wasting shots on my phantom. I'm going to try to move my flame squad down, but a little bad micro there. Um, I was able to perform a lot better ever since I got a new video card, right? Uh, I click something and it moves to where I want it to go, and it feels so good. That when you tell the computer to do something, it does it. Like, whoa. So anyway, I, I finish up off here and I was able to pick up the win. 
uh, the power of this deck is the Phantom knocks out infantry, uh, knocks out units very quickly. The Inferno knocks out uh, units very, very quickly. And it's just a really well-balanced deck. Now, a lot of you are going to say, Oh, this is the deck that Alicia Destiny uses. Look, there is nothing new under the sun. Every single deck, somebody, somewhere, it must have used it at some point. Right? So it's really hard to come up with something unique. So uh, here, I actually play KB07. Okay, so uh, for those of you watching, I don't know if this stands for something else, a 7. Is that another letter? Is it KBU7? Or is it like Kaboot? Is, is the 7 a T? Or... K bow o seven, K blow seven, K blow. This is time for a B. Well, anyway, um, K boo, okay. K boo. He rolls out with a bike, which is interesting because I believe I actually played him in the previous match, or this may have been a different person. I don't remember at this time. But I see him roll his bike, and I'm not going to sacrifice my cyber wheels for no reason. So I go ahead and pull it back, and I do an even trade-off. Because I pulled my bike back, right, I and I made him travel all the way across the map, I knew my scorpion tank could rapidly engage him, which is exactly what happens. And I was able to roll a scorpion tank. Here, when you see tech tanks, the key is to try to get at least one shot on them before they get settled. And that's what I do. My scorpion tank is not in great shape right now, and I noticed that, hey, this guy's rolled out some pretty strong units, and he's got pretty good position. So, rather than my traditional single harvester, I actually went with the double harvester. Because I figured one of the best ways for me to counter him right now is just to spam units. So at the top here, notice what I do. Okay, I know he's only got one bike, I quickly knock him out. I split my tank so that I'm on two tiles. And on the bot, and uh, that gives me the tile advantage because I'm on three, he's on two, and game's gonna be over. I'll go ahead and let my tank die there because I need a fresh tank, and it's keeping my population cap uh, real, real slow. I'm gonna go ahead and engage his bike now. I'm gonna go finish him off. All right, so there goes his bike. I do not engage his tick tank because when it's settled in, it's very hard to kill. But right now, it's weak. So I'm going to go ahead and try to get two shots on him as best I can. He's got a whole bunch of tick tanks, and this is the reason why I rolled my Inferno. I didn't go after his weaker one because it'd be pretty easy for me to finish him off. I let my Scorpion tank die because I don't need it anymore, right? Well, not that I don't need it, but it's already weakened. So, mistake on his part. I don't know why he decided it was a good idea to run a bike right where the tick tank is, uh, right where my Infernals are going to be. He runs it across, and instead of going after my Infernals, he just realizes that I have a double Harvester, giving me a huge economic advantage. Even though I'm rolling out units a little more slowly, it doesn't really matter, because once the Infernals are in position on the Missile Tiles, they are quite hard to dislodge unless you have really strong anti-air units. So here I go ahead and roll out more Infernals. Right? My Infernals are going to make real quick work of his bikes. I'm on three Missile Tiles, and it, I'm just roasting him to death. And there's the end of that match, right? This is the reason why I love this deck. For those of you who ask if I spend any money on this game, I do not. There's a reason why it's called Poor Man Gamer, not Rich Man Gamer, not Spend Man Gamer. It's called Poor Man Gamer because I'm poor and cheap, right? They're not mutually exclusive. You can be poor and cheap, and that's me. So right now you've seen two wins. I'm going to show you guys the one weakness on this deck, right? And this is when I lost uh, to almost my... I'm going to double check if this is the game I got disconnected. Because there's no way I'm going to lose to somebody with um, Scarabs. So I only lost twice, and I believe this is the game I may have been disconnected. So let's find out. That's why he wins. Yep, I got disconnected. So he did not beat me with his stupid Scarab deck. I lost because I got disconnected. Uh, where's that match? There it is. So take a look at here. This guy beat me because his freaking micro skills are amazing, right? At least for this game. He totally caught me off guard. The one weakness of this deck is because the anti-vehicles rely on vehicles, you have to constantly micro to keep away from missile squads. And it is a bit of a chore after a while. And I'm going to show you precisely how I lost. I actually got the upper hand in the beginning, but I ended up losing because I I just got tired, to be honest with you. Right, I'm moving around and I just started not paying as much attention, and it's the little details that's going to win the game. So hopefully here, I'm going to break down for you the little details that I use. When I see a cyber wheel, 
I'm okay with rolling up bike. A lot of people love to save, save up for a scorpion tank, and that's exactly what you see here. Right? I'm gonna go ahead and back away my bikes. Right? Because I am not gonna beat a scorpion tank. But my strategy is to try to get the bike in position first, get a shot off at least, like this. Boom. And then I actually try to use two bikes and gang up on that scorpion tank. When a scorpion tank backs away like the way he does, it actually gives me an advantage. I was hoping he would run right in, but he doesn't. And take a look at what happens here. Now it's just a, a game of micro. I do see a second tank coming. I'm going to move my bike back. Um, well, I did in that case, but I wanted to move my bike back because I wanted to give my scorpion tank a little bit of space to operate. Let the bikes take the damage while my scorpion tank goes to work. And that's precisely what happens here. Uh, with my two bikes and a scorpion tank, I was able to knock out more of his uh, tanks than he was able to knock out my units. So I actually came out ahead here. And uh, right now, I back away my scorpion tank because I know it w I don't want to lose it. And uh, because I did that, notice how I actually came out an adva way ahead in that matchup. My mistake here was assuming that he would roll out more vehicles. That is not what happened. Right, I got a little bit antsy jumping the gun going after his harvester, and so that delayed me winning that first missile. He positioned his uh, laser troops really, really well. I did not expect him to have laser troops. I charge up my flame squad to quickly wrap up this missile and get the win. I go ahead and form a wall now to guarantee myself the win, and there it is. So what I should do here is immediately move my flame squad down, which I didn't do. I should have moved it backwards. What I should have done at this stage was strategically retreat. When you see units like this, don't keep pressing forward. My mistake was I just kept pressing forward and that got me in trouble. Right, and now in every position on the map he has a matchup advantage. So now I'm down to one flame squad. That's not going to do much against his, um, his uh, missile squ uh, laser squads. Uh, the only reason I did more damage is because I'm a full level 10. Uh, no, sorry, I am a level 10 and he's not. So now I have two tanks on the map. Uh, he was very, very close to getting my harvester. I've got three tanks. He's got three tanks. I'm going to show you exactly here the matchup mistake I made. See that? My tank went into the d triangle of death. I should have backed up my tanks earlier and then re engaged him as one giant shotgun tank. Instead of doing that, I lost this matchup because I did not micro my tanks well. See that here? Mistake. My second tank didn't fire. He went 2 on 1 on my tank and I fell behind by one shot. That one shot makes all the difference in the world because now he's got one fully healthy tank and I do not and so I lost that matchup quite badly. And because of that I can't replenish my units fast enough. It's too close right now for the missile count and here I'm gonna go ahead and lose. Right? That missile engagement. So now he's got his scorpion tanks pressing me. I should have countered with more scorpion tank. I was hoping that with my inferno that I would have a strong enough counter against him to make it worth my while. Right? He's waiting for me to rebuild a scorpion tank. I, uh, my, uh, sorry, my harvester. I didn't do that because his tank was in such a strong position. I'm gonna try and go ahead and use my inferno and try to take him out as best as I can. Right? All those stealth tanks are causing me problems. Another mistake, instead of chasing a stealth tank, I should have backed up, engaged a scorpion tank first, right? So that I get rid of it. Now I am really in trouble because I held off all that time without building anything. And now I have no economy. I don't have any good answers to his stealth tank, uh, except for my scorpion tanks. And so he's going to go win this missile. The third missile takes by a lot more quickly. I always say, great players know to retreat. I got greedy, I didn't retreat, I lost that game. And uh, I hope through this video that you guys have been able to gain something uh, insightful into how to use this deck uh, in terms of how to win and everything. It is a very powerful deck, it is a very effective deck, but when you don't micro uh, properly and you lose the early game, uh, game is pretty much going to be over for you. So here I'm going to show you one more matchup where I believe it was quite a close game. I micro did a little bit better and it really made the difference between a win and a loss. Uh, I am trying my best here to point out little details throughout the game. I notice sometimes with my commentary, I get caught up in describing the action that's happened as opposed to the thought process that's behind it. Right. So here, again, I roll up my cyber wheel. I'm engaging his rifleman. There's no reason for me to disengage him. So I'm going to go ahead and roll out and say, uh-oh, what does he have? Well, YouTube, 
What do you do in this case? He's got a missile squad and I have a cyber wheel. No point building another cyber wheel to lose it. Why am I attacking his rifleman? Very simple. If I can knock out his rifleman and weaken him, my flame squad is going to do a lot better when I engage him. He's got not really going to have an answer for my flame squad. This is precisely why my cyber wheel engages his rifleman once again. Right? I'm going to go uh, do a little quick switch route. I do see his missile squad on the top. I'm going to keep my cyber wheel on the bottom. I'm not overly concerned about his bike because it's going to take a while for his bike to blow up my harvester. Right? So if you take a look here, I'm going to go keep chasing his missile squad. And this is why I didn't build a bike to immediately counter him. I built a scorpion tank because the scorpion tank is going to make real quick work of him. My flame squad at the top was going to die anyway. Even if I ran away because of the speed advantage, the chem buggy. So I purposely let it stay there. Why did I let it stay there? I wanted his chem buggy to stay where it was so my scorpion tank could chase it down. Now instead of automatically building a bike, it was imbalanced. You see that? What I should have done, if I have a bike and a cyber wheel already, I should have built a flame squad to balance out the deck. I didn't do that and that almost got me in trouble because now I have a matchup disadvantage. Fortunately, he walked right into his own chem cloud and I killed him off. Um, again, with the matchup here, um, my tank against his bikes. Right On the bottom, I have the cyber wheels against his laser squad, which actually isn't the end of the world. One on one, they don't win, but they do uh, quite a bit of good chip damage against them. Right, I'm going to go ahead now and go after his uh, harvester. And he's going to try to use his... Uh, he's playing his matchups correctly here. He's trying to protect his harvester. I'm not going to let that live. That tank isn't going to uh, live any longer, so I'll let it die. And now I can refresh my units knowing what he has out there. He's got bikes, I have a flame squad, I have a scorpion tank, and I have an inferno. The inferno is going to one-shot his bike very quickly. He shouldn't have ran away. So bam, down goes him. Right, I'm going to use my tank. And remember, all I have to do is win two out of three tiles. So I'm going to use my flame squad here to block him off. Right, I'm going to go ahead and jump on two tiles. I'm on all three right now. I'm not overly concerned about my uh, tank burning to the ground because they don't, the burn doesn't last as long anymore. I'm going to go ahead and use my scorpion tank, get it out there, right? All I got to do is win two out of three tiles. I get my two out of three tiles, and I get myself the win. So, folks, I hope by explaining the thought process behind what I'm doing, it really helps you out with your gameplay. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button. If I can get to 1,000 subscribers, YouTube starts paying me money, pennies for th thousands of watched hours. But it makes a huge difference because that means... I can keep making more videos. So guys, thank you so much for watching, and as always, have a wonderful day. Take care.